All right, we're with the one and only Sam Kendricks, and it is so great to see you back out on the road competing, and it was fun to watch you and Mondo. So watching you two guys with 4,000 people out there reminded me of watching Boobka in 96 yeah. at Bruce Jenner, uh -huh. and they stayed there for two hours. Yeah, of course. So people will stay for the pole vault. They sure will. And you guys encourage the heck out of it. So tell me a little bit about, so when you're watching for the wind, when, when you're trying to give Mondo, what is he looking for? Well, a pole vault competition is its own story every single time. It's not just start, finish, bang, time. Yeah. Uh, there's a development. Imagine you've only got so many great efforts, and you just hope your greatest effort is the 100 that you happen to run at that moment. Yeah. You're rewarded for 100% of your effort. In the pole vault, not so. You could jump a world record bar over the initial height, and then all of a sudden you might have wasted your best jump that day. Right. There's a metric by which everything happens in the pole vault. Today, it's a very different story. Because the winds were so extraneous, everyone had to reach deep into their coffers in order to write the right kind of bill to figure out what they needed. Yeah. Well, something so important to pole vaulters is a groove. We saw Ryan Krauser fall into his groove, and then all of a sudden, wing, bing, bam, boom, world record. Top five all-time throws. That's how athletes really succeed in the pole vault you have to play it's like poker yeah. right and every bar you get new information you get new cards and by the end me and mondo they're sitting there with all the cards we've developed seeing who's going to win at six meters yeah he just happened to beat me on misses but the whole story is that the winds being extraneous the men competing well in the beginning but poorly at the end it's tough you saw so many men rise and fall between the 571 and the 581 bar that's the climax of the event, not me and Mondo at the end. That's just extra. So we have to ask ourselves, why? Why was it so tough? Well, it was tough because this is un neutral ground. No yeah. one's ever competed here before. Even Sandre, who has been a Bruin in the past and has never competed on this track. Wow. So nobody, this is neutral ground. I love that. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Travel to a new place, new competition, first edition meet, and you get something special. But the winds are also split. They go left, they go right, they go in your face, and then at your back. But that's a direct opposition to getting in a groove. You want to have consistency. You want to be able to build a great jump rather than have to make some new decision every single time. I, I really retreated into myself. I had to give up being my best athletic self today in order to combat the wind. Mondo is, had to sacrifice being Mondo. There was no chance for a world record today with the conditions. But we okay. wanted to make it seem like we could put on a good show. And we did. Yeah. I did something that I've never done before. The standards. In order to combat the wind, I brought the standards closer than just about anybody in history to jump 590. I don't think anybody jumped 590 with the standards closer. Okay. I took a risk. I took, a, I took the standards to all the way to 25 centimeters, which is 15 centimeters less than the minimum in college that you're allowed to go to. In high school, it's 20 centimeters less. I was eight inches closer than my little brother is, even has the option to jump at. I took a risk in order to really commit. That's what the wind made me do. Are it's dangerous. Your, are you one of the biggest poles? I was not. I was in a middle pole. Okay. But when you when you are developing through the competition, you have to find a way to use your your skills garnered from years and years before in order to try to put up a big bar. It's not an accident that me and Mondo were able to jump 590 when other guys weren't, but it otherwise might have gone any other way today. Are you using your your, uh, your uh, longest run up? Yes, so I've been I've been doing this a long time. I learned from Renola Villani in his prime, jumping in the shadow of the first world record holder in my career, that you never hold back any of your tools at the beginning of a competition. You want to know how they work. Yeah. And then by the end, hopefully you can rely on them. Yeah. If you are, I think Katie and Ajat learned last night that you need to utilize all your tools initially. Otherwise, something may happen so fast that you can't adjust to it. Sure. You want to make the decision small and repeatable. And there's no, there's no cliche, I wanted to execute my event in the pole vault. It never works like that. There's something different every time, a new story. The, the event can change. You look at the scorecard of just about every competition, I've never jumped a competition that was the same as another. Never run the same time, almost. But in this competition today, does it give you um, confidence mm -hmm. in where you're at physically? And so if I ask you the question, American record, could we see that again? Or am I absolutely inhaling right now? Well, the last three years, I call them the dark years. Yeah. I suffered. Why? Yeah. Because I chose to be a competition athlete. I will never garner the boons 
of great athleticism from training. Chris Nielsen is a hugely beneficial training athlete. KC okay, Lightfoot, he jumped six. He jumped an American record in practice. I saw it. He's a hugely amazing practice jumper. When you get out here, he needs to develop. He needs to be comfortable. I'm not so. I only get better going competition to competition. I might never train if I could just compete. That is, that's, I love being out here so much. I'm, the guys make a joke, Sam, you don't train, you just compete. And they're right. And that's the way the guys used to do it in the yeah. old days. Yeah. I'm an old guy, so I got to do the old tricks, you know? Can you say hi to uh, my friend Becca Gillespie Peter, the pole vault power lady? Yeah, of course, Becca, it's always good to see you. You need to come hang out sometime. <laughs> okay, thank you. How long can you jump? Well, I've got a lot of great friends that tell me and have shown me that pole vaulters are generally in their prime more yeah. later than others. It's just this newest era that all of a sudden guys are popping off high bars in college. Sandre was it, it disappointed out there today, but technically, even though he's an old guy, he's still in the NCAA, he jumped high enough to win every NCAA championships I was ever in. Yeah, That's a great bar, but he just happened to be thrown in with the big dogs, right? Yeah. The guys, and Sandre's got a six meter bar, but he hasn't lived in that world as long as everybody. Um, he's he's got international experience and everything, but he shouldn't be disappointed. It was tough. He had the worst warm-up of anybody, and I will tell him this to his face. I was very impressed by how he rallied. Uh, where do you compete next? I go home for two days to repack. I'm building my own training center at home. i got to make sure the concrete gets poured right. It's going to be lovely, green, beautiful, world-class private facility. I want everybody to come visit. Uh, and then I'm headed to Poland for two competitions, then to Norway for two, and then to Germany for one. And I'll be home the 18th. Sam, you always do great interviews. I always enjoy talking to you. I learned something about the pole vault. Thank you very much for Sam Kendrick.